This video will give you a short tour of Stat Graphics Centuria. When you first uh, load the program, you'll be looking at this window. Since Stat Graphics is very much of a Windows oriented program, you'll see a lot of typical user interface items. At the top of the window is a standard menu. Uh, it has menu items such as file to let you open, close, and save files, edit to do copies, paste, and that sort of thing. And other operations on the right, such as view, window, and help, which I'm sure you're familiar with. The statistical programs are located uh, under the menu items between plot and snap stats. At least they are if you've chosen to use the standard menu. Um, if you've chosen to use the Six Sigma menu instead, you'll see slightly different menu items define, measure, analyze, improve, control, the sorts of things you would learn about in a Six Sigma program. But for these videos, we're going to concentrate on using the standard menu. Underneath the top main menu is what I'm going to call the main toolbar. The main toolbar has shortcuts to commonly used operations such as opening and closing stat folios, opening and closing data files, um, cut, copy, paste, and undo, those sorts of things, print, print preview. There are also, uh, I think it's 11 buttons that you can set to go directly to whichever procedures you use the most. Uh, <clears throat> I'll show you how to do that uh, a little bit later in another video. We also have shortcuts to the Stat Advisor, the Stat Wizard, the Help System, and even a little Stat Graphics Calculator. <laughs> These are all items though that you could get to if you wanted to uh, through the main menu. Underneath the main toolbar, you'll see an analysis toolbar. An analysis toolbar is only active once you've actually created a statistical analysis. It'll then let you do things like uh, set different options, choose additional tables and graphs, uh, manipulate the graphics in various ways. And uh, <coughs> I'll be giving demos of those uh, in some of the later videos as well. On the right hand side, uh, sorry, the left hand side, you'll see what we call the navigation bar. The navigation bar will have a link to each window that's currently been created. When you first come into the program, there are actually five windows that are created by default. The first window uh, is the data book. That's what we're actually looking at now with the rows and columns. This is where the data needs to be placed in order to be analyzed. Um, the data book actually contains 26 different data sheets, each of which can be linked to a different data source. So, for example, one could be linked uh, to an Excel file, a second to uh, an Access database, for example. And you can combine, uh, in a single statistical analysis, actually data from several different sources. There's another window called the Stat Advisor. Uh, this is where advice will appear, actually interpretations, uh, after you've done some sort of st statistical procedure. Uh, it turns out to be very useful and, and a unique part of stat graphics, the fact that it will take the statistical output and interpret it in plain language. Uh, we have a link to the stat gallery, which is a place where we can hang and paste uh, pictures created in different uh, statistical analyses. It lets us do side-by-side -side comparisons of different graphs. We can even overlay uh, multiple graphs on top of each other. There's a link to something called the Stat Reporter, which is actually a uh, <coughs> version of WordPad running right inside Stat Graphics. You can take output that you create in different procedures, paste them in to the Stat Reporter, uh, edit it if you like, and then save it away as an RTF file, which could later be uh, opened directly into Microsoft Word. There's also a, a single edit field called the Comments field where you can, as it says, enter a description of your statfolio. Now, statfolio is actually our fancy term for your session. You'll see at the top of the window it currently says Stat Graphics Centurion Untitled Statfolio. Uh, after you've opened some data and done a sequence of analyses, you can save that entire session away uh, in what we call a statfolio 
and then at some later time open it back up again. A couple other windows uh, you'll want to know about. Um, for example, uh, over here on the edit menu, uh, if I pull this down, you'll see something and uh, a setting called preferences. Now, Preferences uh, will bring up a big tab dialog box where you can set different options. For example, you can set the default confidence level that you'd like to see appear uh, whenever you create something like a confidence interval. Uh, currently, it's set to 95%, but you can change to something uh, else. You also set the number of significant digits. Uh, by default, Stack Graphics will display everything with six significant digits, significant figures, and all the numerical output which is usually enough um, to make uh, sound decisions, although you can ask for more uh, if you have large data sets and think uh, more would be relevant. Um, <clears throat> there are options here for using the Six Sigma menu. Uh, you can actually switch uh, back and forth between the Classic and the Six Sigma menus with, with that checkbox. You can specify whether to use uh, two-digit or four-digit years for your uh, dates when they're displayed. Um, you can also down here uh, set up a temporary file directory. Now, uh, by default, when Stack Graphics creates files, it'll save them uh, to wherever the working directory is. Um, you can change that if you like using the Browse button. And if you have bought the bilingual or multilingual system, you can switch on the fly between English and some other language. Uh, I'm going to keep the videos in English, but uh, for those of you who, who want, you can actually create a statistical analysis and on the fly switch and see everything change to another language. Anyway, that's a quick tour. I'll minimize these windows, shrink them down as taskbars uh, along the bottom of the screen. Um, and then in the next video, I'll tell you a little bit about entering data into StackGraph.